After exploring the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber, a very advanced robot revealed what technology ancient Egyptians used for building pyramids. With that, scientists finally were able to enter and explore a mysterious void located in the pyramids, and it finally ended theories and speculations about its purpose. In addition, scientists finally solved a question, and now we know that the pyramids were built very fast, in a matter of a few years. Finally, recently scientists explored the Queen's Chamber inside the Great Pyramid, and they have finally released 9 hours of unedited footage that shows everything inside the Queen's Chamber, which is an incredible achievement. A recent study published in the journal Nature Communications reveals that scientists have been using non-invasive scans to examine the pyramid since 2015. Through a collaboration called Scan Pyramids, researchers from different countries have been utilizing cosmic ray imaging and infrared thermology to create detailed maps of what's hidden beneath the weathered outer layer of the pyramid stones. The scans conducted have unveiled a number of empty spaces within the pyramid, one of which is the 35-foot passage situated close to the entrance where tourists currently visit. This corridor is located just behind a pattern of stones, arranged in a chevron shape. A video released by Scan Pyramids provides details into the mapping procedure and showcases the exact location of this recently found passage. Once the existence of the empty space was discovered, scientists employed an endoscope to capture pictures of the corridor. The first pictures taken with the endoscope seem to show there is nothing, but we cannot see the room precisely yet, says Sebastien Procure, the study's lead author and a physicist from the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, in a conversation with Owen Jarris from Live Science. The construction of the Great Pyramid took place approximately in 2560 BC, during the reign of Khufu, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh from the Old Kingdom. Khufu's life and death have long been shrouded in mystery and fascination. There are conflicting accounts about him, with the Greek historian Herodotus depicting him as a harsh and ruthless ruler, which contradicts the Egyptian beliefs about his wisdom. Various myths continue to circulate regarding how Khufu obtained the resources and what drove him to build the Great Pyramid. It's interesting to point out that the construction time for pyramids varied, depending on factors such as the size, complexity, and available resources. While it is difficult to generalize an exact time frame, it is believed that the construction of most pyramids in ancient Egypt took several years to complete. For example, the smaller pyramids, such as those found at Sakra and other locations, may have taken around 10 to 15 years to build. These pyramids were generally smaller in size and less complex compared to the monumental pyramids like those at Giza. On the other hand, the larger pyramids, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, required a significantly longer construction period. As mentioned earlier, the Great Pyramid of Giza is estimated to have taken around 20 years to complete. According to an article by Mike Dash, published in Smithsonian Magazine, the purpose behind the intricate network of chambers and passages in the Great Pyramid, which is the most intricate among all pyramids, still remains a mystery. This pyramid stands out from others of its era because it is the only one that features tunnels constructed high above the ground. In 2017, scientists made a new discovery in the pyramid, a mysterious empty space. This chamber is about 98 feet long, but its exact purpose remains a puzzle. It might be simpler to figure out what it wasn't used for. For instance, Mohammed Ismail, a spokesperson for the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, rejected the notion that it could be a hidden and forgotten burial chamber. Ismail explained to CNN reporters Cassandra Santiago and Sarah El Sajini in 2017 that if there were another burial chamber, there would have been an entrance to it. According to Mustafa Wazari, the leader of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, the recently found corridor in the pyramid probably served the purpose of distributing the weight across the massive structure. As reported by Aidan Lewis from Reuters, this explanation makes sense considering that the pyramid was constructing using 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing an average of over 2 tons. Reg Clark, an Egyptologist from Swansea University in Wales, who is not involved in the study, shared a similar perspective, suggesting that this chamber was primarily a logistical feature. According to Clark, the Egyptian tomb builders implemented various structural innovations in the pyramids for practical reasons. In a conversation with Live Science, he explained that many of these architectural elements were designed with a pragmatic approach in mind. The researchers intend to carry on with their scanning efforts at the site 
with the aim of discovering artifacts within the space and uncovering further enigmas related to it. Many years ago, scientists began conducting important research on the Great Pyramid. They decided to close the pyramid for an entire year, marking the first time it was shut down for such a long period. The purpose was to implement a rotational system at the Giza site, where one pyramid would be closed each year while the other two remained open. This system aimed to strike a balance between preserving the pyramids and accommodating tourists. During the conservation process, an interesting discovery was made inside the Great Pyramid. It was found that the interior had a humidity level of 85%. The main reason for this high humidity was the presence of tourists. Each person who entered the pyramid unknowingly contributed around 20 grams of water through their breathing. The pyramid required cleaning, and a solution was needed to permanently reduce its humidity. One suggestion was to clean the air shafts located in the third chamber, known as the King's Chamber, and install machines inside them to create a ventilation system. The person who spoke about this was able to have a conversation with Rainer Stadelman, who was the director of the German Archaeological Institute in Cairo at the time. Stadelman then arranged for a robotics expert named Rudolf Guttenbrink to come and carry out the work through the institute. Guttenbrink developed a robot named Wabawat specifically for investigating the air shafts in the third chamber. The robot was also sent into the air shafts of the Queen's chamber, and during its exploration, it made an interesting discovery. In the south shaft, Wabawat encountered an obstacle at a distance of 208 feet, which appeared to be a door or a small stone with two copper handles. One of the handles on the left side had lost a piece at some point in ancient times, and that broken piece was found lying approximately six feet in front of the door stone. The shaft located at the northern end of the Queen's Chamber was blocked after around 27 feet. Gottenbrink's work provided the most detailed examination of the shafts in the Queen's Chamber that had been conducted so far. The investigation of these shafts continues even today. After conducting additional tests to ensure safety, a minute camera called an endoscope was carefully inserted through a small gap in the stone near the main entrance. An official photograph released by the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities illustrates the location of a hidden corridor above the primary entrance of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The endoscope was skillfully maneuvered into the empty space, located behind a chevron structure on the pyramid's wall. The captured footage unveiled an unoccupied corridor-like space featuring walls constructed with stone blocks and a triangular vaulted ceiling. Mustafa Wazari, the head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, offered speculation that the chamber may have been designed to distribute the pyramid's weight around the main entrance or serve another purpose that remains undiscovered. Egyptologists have put forth various theories regarding the purpose of these shafts. One idea suggests that they were intended for ventilation, but this explanation falls short because the shafts do not lead to the outside. Another theory proposes an astronomical function for the shafts, where the southern one aligns with the stars Sirius while the northern one connects to Ursa Minor and Beta. However, Stadelman holds a different viewpoint. According to him, these shafts were not intended for ventilation, but rather serve as tunnels through which the soul of the pharaoh ascends to the eternal, unending stars. Scientists are of the belief that the shafts found in the queen's chamber of the pyramid may not serve any particular function, since they were deliberately blocked from the inside. If these shafts had a religious purpose, it is expected that they would have been left open similar to the shafts in the third burial chamber, also known as the King's Chamber. These open shafts in the King's Chamber were designed to lead outside of the pyramid, suggesting that they were intended for the soul of Khufu, the pharaoh, to travel through. According to this understanding, the south shaft was constructed for Khufu to embody the sun god Ra. It opens precisely between the two boat pits located to the south of the pyramid. The boats would have been used by Khufu as solar vessels, with one boat designed for daytime travel and the other for the evening journey. On the other hand, the north shaft was believed to be created for the soul of Khufu as Horus, allowing it to journey towards the stars and eventually emerge as the sun god. Further investigation was necessary to unravel the purpose behind the shafts in the Queen's Chamber. The German Institute in Cairo held the concession for studying the Great Pyramid, but it seemed they lacked the interest to fully explore the shafts. However, granting the concession to Gutenberg, an individual researcher, was not possible due to the requirement of the Egyptian Antiquities Law, which only permits institutions to hold concessions. To address this, experts made the decision for the Supreme Council of Antiquities SCA, to take charge of the exploration. They approached Tim Kelly from the National Geographic Television to develop a robot capable of probing the shafts, with the expedition being led by Hawass. 
Although scientists believed that there might be nothing of significance behind a certain door in the shafts, they deemed it crucial for both scholars and the public to be aware of this. Archaeologists understand the value of even empty spaces in unraveling the mysteries of ancient structures. National Geographic created a robot known as the Pyramid Rover, and the Permanent Committee of the Supreme Council of Antiquities SCA, recognized and supported the project as an initiative originating from Egypt. The television program had a set date, and in preparation for it, Howes traveled to Hong Kong and Singapore to promote the show. Similarly, archaeologist Mark Lerner visited Australia and Spain right after the program aired. Both Howes and his colleagues at National Geographic were committed to being truthful and transparent. They wanted to ensure that people were well informed and ready for any discoveries or potential lack thereof that might be revealed during the show. The documentary aimed to provide the public with evidence about the individuals who constructed the pyramids. In the program, Howass intended to discuss tombs and present graffiti that identified the work gangs responsible for building the pyramids. Additionally, he planned to venture inside the Step Pyramid of Jossa, marking the first time such access would be granted. The substructure of this pyramid encompasses a complex network of tunnels, passages, and rooms spanning approximately three and a half miles. According to Zaha, it was his belief that the interior of the Step Pyramid had never been featured in a film before, and no living Egyptologist had ever entered it. On the day preceding the show, an important discovery came to light through ultrasound scanning. The door located in the southern shaft of the Great Pyramid measured around 6 centimeters in thickness, suggesting that there might be something of significance behind it. A decision was made to drill a small hole, just 3 millimeters in diameter, in the door in order to insert a camera and explore what lay beyond. During the final moments of the show, the camera was successfully sent in, revealing the presence of a second door located 21 centimeters behind the first one. Interestingly, the second door differed from the first, appearing more like a screen or covering, which intrigued the experts. Furthermore, the surface of the door displayed numerous cracks. The experts felt a sense of excitement upon witnessing this discovery, but they were perplexed as to why there was another door, and the reasons behind its unique characteristics remained unclear. The television show received a positive response from audiences worldwide, garnering high ratings and earning praise from Fox Television in the United States, who described it as great. The program also attracted a massive viewership of around half a billion people in China. The show's impact extended beyond television screens, as newspapers from around the globe provided extensive coverage, surpassing the attention typically given to any other television program. A few days following the television show, scientists made the decision to send the robot into the northern shaft for further exploration. Both Gatton Brink and Dixon had previously managed to investigate only about 27 feet of the shaft, due to a bend in its path. Upon closer examination, it became apparent that this bend was deliberately created to avoid intersecting with the Grand Gallery. This observation suggests that the shafts were carved out after the construction of the Grand Gallery. Using the Pyramid Rover, the exploration continued through this northern shaft. The robot's progress was halted after a total distance of 208 feet as it reached another door equipped with copper handles. Notably, this door was situated in the exact same position as the first door, found in the southern shaft, and bore a striking resemblance to it. Behind this door, it is highly likely that another door exists, positioned at an exact distance of 0.7 feet from the first door mirroring the configuration observed in the southern shaft. The copper handles found on the initial doors of both the north and south shafts bear resemblance to the handle seen on Tutin Kamin's Canopic jar box, which is currently housed at the Cairo Museum. These copper handles were originally used to attach ropes for the purpose of pulling the Canopic jars. The doors themselves are crafted from high-quality white limestone, sourced from Tura. It appears that the handles were designed to facilitate the movement of these doors inside the shafts, needing them to be positioned at the same location. The existence of these doors within the Great Pyramid raises numerous intriguing questions. One theory suggests that these doors symbolize a challenge that the pharaoh must confront on his journey into the afterlife. In the pyramid text, it is mentioned that the king will encounter bolts before his passage. The copper handles on the doors could possibly represent these symbolic bolts. However, if this interpretation holds true, why are the doors only found in Khufu's pyramid? Additionally, why are they absent in the shafts of the third chamber, where the king's burial takes place? Logically, one would expect these doors to be present where the pharaoh's body is interred. These peculiar doors may offer evidence that Khufu's burial chamber may be concealed somewhere within his pyramid. 
Their presence raises the possibility that there are hidden chambers yet to be discovered within the pyramid, further deepening the mystery surrounding its construction and purpose. These doors added an extra level of intrigue to the narrative surrounding the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The fact that the second door in the south shaft differs in appearance from the first door heightened the excitement. What's more, the presence of a door in the north shaft, situated in the same position as the one in the south shaft, featuring similar characteristics with its copper handles, intensifies the fascination surrounding these discoveries. Experts have devised a plan to clean the south shaft from the exterior in order to determine if indeed it opens up to the outside. If it is confirmed that the south shaft has an opening, it could suggest that it served as a symbolic door for the pharaoh to pass through when transitioning into the netherworld. However, if the south shaft is found to be sealed, researchers will need to revisit the West Ka Papari, an ancient text, and examine how Khufu sought the guidance of the god Thoth to assist him in designing his pyramid. It is through further investigation of these shafts that their true purpose can be unveiled, potentially unraveling one of the many mysteries that surround the Great Pyramid. Moreover, equally compelling are the inscriptions and graffiti found inside the Great Pyramid, each marking a significant discovery in the unending quest to understand the past. The term graffiti is typically associated with unauthorized inscriptions or drawings created in public places. In the context of the Great Pyramid, however, Graffiti refers to markings left by the workers who built it. These include names, dates, work gang titles, and other pieces of information that provide a snapshot of life during the time of its construction. The graffiti discovered in the pyramid has proven invaluable in understanding the logistics and labor organization behind one of the most monumental architectural achievements in history. The most significant of these inscriptions are the so-called quarry marks, found in the relieving chambers above the king's chamber during an expedition led by Colonel Howard Weiss in 1837. These markings, hidden from view since the pyramid's construction, contained hieroglyphic symbols, including the cartouche, or raw name, of Khufu, Cheops in Greek. This marked the first time that Khufu's name was found inscribed in the Great Pyramid, effectively putting to rest any doubts about the pyramid's attribution to this particular pharaoh. These inscriptions also provided valuable insight into the organization of the workforce, the builders of the pyramid appear to have been divided into work crews with distinct names, such as the Friends of Khufu or the Drunkards of Manicure. This demonstrated a level of labor organization far more sophisticated than what was previously assumed about the ancient Egyptian society. On the other hand, the discovery of the workers' graffiti in the Great Pyramid of Giza came about as a result of extensive and systematic archaeological research. This exciting revelation was primarily driven by the tireless work of two renowned archaeologists, Mark Lerner and Zaha Hawass, who led collaborative international teams in painstaking archaeological excavations and studies over several years. As stated by Lerner, the graffiti inside the Great Pyramid brings the silent stones to life. These inscriptions give a voice to the nameless masses who erected this monument, revealing a level of organization, pride, and possibly even humor that we didn't associate with pyramid construction before. The graffiti were not found in the more accessible areas of the pyramid that had been explored and documented earlier. Instead, they were hidden deep within the pyramid, in hidden chambers and narrow, winding shafts that had largely remained unexplored due to their inaccessibility. These locations had been preserved over thousands of years, untouched by the passage of time or the hands of tourists. In the late 20th century, using advanced technologies and methodologies such as robotic exploration and laser scanning, these archaeologists and their teams were able to navigate and document these previously unexplored areas. As they carefully removed layers of soot, dust and decay, the once obscured graffiti began to emerge. The marks were not just casual scrolls, they were purposefully and meticulously made inscriptions that had survived the test of time. Each of these markings was diligently recorded, analyzed and interpreted by experts in the field. It was a collaborative effort that drew on the skills and knowledge of a wide range of experts, from epigraphers who deciphered the ancient hieroglyphs to engineers who helped navigate the physical challenges posed by the structure of the pyramid itself. The discovery of the graffiti was a landmark moment in the field of Egyptology, providing critical insights into the lives and organization of the pyramid builders. It challenged existing narratives and opened new avenues of research, transforming our understanding of ancient Egypt and the people who built these monumental structures. Renowned archaeologist Dr. Sarah Parkak commented, the discovery of workers' graffiti within the Great Pyramid of Giza 
offers a unique snapshot into the lives and organization of the workers. It's like a time machine, taking us back to the very days of the pyramid's construction and providing first-hand accounts of the people who lived, toiled, and believed in the sacredness of their labor. In addition, as you know, Elon Musk is excited about the pyramids. He tweeted that the pyramids are something special because creating long-lasting art is incredibly difficult. And he is famous for how, in the past, he said that the pyramids were built by aliens. However, later, Elon Musk changed his mind and shared a theory about how the pyramids were built. In the article that Musk shared, it explained how the construction of the pyramids involved careful planning, organization, and a large labor force. The process began with the selection of a suitable site, typically on the western bank of the Nile, as the Egyptians associated the west with the realm of the dead. The construction site was then prepared by leveling the ground and creating a solid foundation. The primary building material used for the pyramids was limestone, quarried and transported from nearby sources. The stones were shaped and cut with copper or stone tools, and then moved into position using ramps, sledges, and possibly a system of levers. It is believed that the ramps were used to haul the stones upwards as the pyramid grew in height. The construction process involved layering the stones in a step-like manner, forming the characteristic pyramid shape. The outer layer of the pyramid was often made of polished limestone, providing a smooth and gleaming surface. The interior of the pyramid consisted of various chambers and passageways, including the burial chamber where the pharaoh's sarcophagus would be placed. Well, this is what Musk thinks, and that's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.